everybody. It's Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and we're here for day 11 on our 12-day live event celebrating the holidays. We've been live streaming every day with a different winter holiday theme painting. And today is one you guys actually suggested to me. And I, you guys shared a, a picture with me, and I interpreted it, and now we have ice wolves in a misty mountain. So I'm going to show you guys everything you need to know to paint a misty, cloudy, foggy mountain in acrylic paint. And also how to paint these gorgeous pair of ice wolves. Now, if you check the description below, if you hit the more button, it'll tell you the materials that we're using. And also there'll be a link to the website. On the website is a traceable of the tool wolves because you might be ready to paint some misty trees, but you might not be ready to draw some wolves. So it's there for you if you need it. We've rated this at a three hoot. But I would say that that's because it's kind of a new skill I'm introducing. I think, you know, be optimistic about uh, being able to do this because it might be easier than you think once you see how it's done. And I'm so excited to show that to you. How are you doing, John? Really good. John was so quiet. The whole announcement. That's John. That's my husband. He's also called Stunt Hands. And he tracks me with cameras mm -hmm. so that you guys can see the brush strokes, see the color mix. And thanks to Linda Cooney. Everybody send love to Linda Cooney. Cool. We have bubbles. Yep. She went all over Houston. Well, we have over 300 people here, so I thought I would just turn the bubbles on just because, oh, you know. we just Texas never... snowflakes. Whoop. So, and look at my palette. <laughs> Texas snowflakes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I realized that was very strange, but the bubbles make me really happy. And that's how they impact me, so that's what happened. Can't be nothing but myself. Yep. So, I'm so excited you guys are ready for this painting. This is an 11 by 14 canvas. On this canvas, I have a couple community wishes. I have a wish that Lisa find her peace and healing. Um, and we actually have a couple of Lisa wishes today. This is a different Lisa. Um, and then also this general wish, safety to the people and firefighters of Ventura County, California as they are going through this incredible fire. I just really want you guys to be safe and the first responders to be safe, everybody to be okay in this fire to get put out and no one to be hurt. That's my general overall wish. A happy birthday to Essa and a happy birthday to Lisa, the other Lisa, the flame. Happy birthday. So that's what we have going on. How you doing, babe? Good, I'm really happy. We have a really great crowd of people here today. They're very excited about everything. Really ready to paint today. I'm ready to show and you. And they're how very to do happy this. to see our bubbles, by the way. They're like, yay, yeah, Texas. Bubbles are back. No. All right, let's get into it. All right, we're ready to get so into it. So the first thing I am going to ask you guys to put out is a bit of black paint. Oh. Really, all this is going to be is like a few colors. I'm going to leave that the picture in picture up there for you to use as reference there. Okay. All right. And mm. you know, I know that uh, I moved the tube I needed to keep the safety you bound. You just you just put it out. <laughs> I just didn't even think. That's okay. So um I'm going to put out some of my titanium white. And I'm going to also put out some of this is thalo blue. I'm making a point of using up some of my tubes that are in there. You ever get your tubes worth that last bit? You're at the last of it. You, you have like three tubes. You're at the last of it. Now, like three tubes that I'm at the last. I save these for art projects later. They make interesting You have a brand new tube there you can use, though. Huh? You have a brand new tube there, I think. I just yeah, I have out. a brand new tube, but I have another almost tube. So I'm going to take a palette knife, and I'm going to do something. I'm going to mix a little blue into my black. Now, this first mixture... I want it to be a little more black than blue. So it's going to be about two parts black to one part blue. All right, now, so we just want it to be a little more black than blue. Now this painting, where, 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 where is this a, a, a one hoot, a two hoot, a three hoot on our one our scale of... Oh, we said that in the beginning. Did we, okay, I missed that. I was paying attention to something else. <laughs> All right, then. I've got it's lots of It's also in the description. I put everything in the description for okay. this whole series of events. Okay. And in, in our Facebook group, we even had a complete 12 days materials list on our Facebook group, which was super nice to be able to do this time. And that had all the hoot ratings and everything you need to do every one of these paintings. So once you have thoroughly mixed, and in painting we have terms like loosely mixed and thoroughly mixed. This is thoroughly mixed. Who doesn't enjoy watching a palette knife smush paint? Super enjoyable. I swear it's like it keeps creeping over, John. <laughs> My palette is so far away from me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a, a, a colored ground. And when I say colored ground, what I mean is that I'm going to paint the canvas a single color. Now, I'm not going to do it as a wash like you will often see people do a ground because they don't have any airbrush medium. 
And without airbrush medium, if you do a wash on plain canvas, it messes with your paint sticking. We don't want to do that because mm-hmm. we want all our paint to stick very much. Very, very much. So I have a number 30 bright here, but what you're looking for is a big brush. Mm-hmm. I have gotten it wet, drug off the extra water, and I am loading it with a little bit of my black. I'm going to come over to my white, and I'm going to make a pretty light color, but not completely light because I want room to lighten up and darken up. This is going to be my mid-tone color, and I'm going to paint just my whole canvas this color. Pull out my white. I have any areas that have gotten too dark, I can always go back over it. I'm just making sure the whole thing is covered with this base color. This is going to help us um, as we're doing our different kind of grayscales sure it's pretty light up here. I can have a nice fogginess. And it's also going to help our clouds down below seem fuller and more complete. This is one of the things I think acrylic painters kind of share with oil painters is that we can tone a canvas. Yes. And that tone isn't always necessary. Sometimes we just block in over raw canvas, but that tone can help us have a more finished painting. Now, you're not talking like a G-sharp or B-flat kind of tone. No, I'm talking about that we're putting a, a ground of color. And in, in painting, anything called a ground is a surface that you paint on. There's a lot of grounds. Mm-hmm. And right now, I'm making sure that my ground is this sort of misty color. Now, you're going to notice that Phthalo blue in Mars black is almost a cool green. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting thing. So I just wanted to change this up for this piece. Um, One, because I wanted to be able to pull these cool ice wolves out of it. And two, because I wanted to show you guys some differences between the blues that we might use in a winter scape. Now I'm going to pick the lighter of my sides that I painted in to start. And if you have an area that's lighter, you want it right about this range. If for any reason you're too dark, you can always just let it dry and come back up over it and paint again to lighten it up. So what you're looking for is that kind of soft gray. It's not in the whites, but it's not in the deep grays. Mm -hmm. If you're thinking of it on a gray scale, it'd be like a two or a three in darkness if one was white and ten was dark. That's a way to visualize it. (laughs) Okay, I'm going to draw this so I can quick sketch in my elements where they're placed, show you how to place your elements on your canvas. And this will help you if you're changing the size of the canvas because you can then move the relationships of objects. But first I have to dry it with a hairdryer so I can draw over it with chalk. All right. Be right back. So while she's doing that, I'll say, make sure my mic, okay, my mic's on. So... I'll say, thank you guys for all coming to hang out, man. We have a really cool crowd here. Like over 400 people here already, and this we're just getting started. You guys, thank you for coming and joining us today. Um, I'm not going to turn the bubbles on right this second because she's got a wet canvas, and sometimes the bubbles make bubble marks on the wet canvas because uh, the glycerin can cause them to quickly underbind, kind of like a drip of water. So, anyway, uh, enough, of the bubble, enough about the bubbles. Thank you guys for coming and joining us. Really, really I totally mean that. Totally every day uh, we do this, especially in the 12 days of Christmas. Um, We've been blessed to see everybody just sort of come and hang out with us and uh, sort of do this painting thing that we've got going on here. And that's really exciting. So thank you guys for coming and being a part of that and and coming together and painting all together this stuff. I'd love to see everything you guys do do. So uh, please share that up on Facebook, on YouTube, on anywhere that you have the links. You just hashtag the Art Sherpa, link us in there. You can put it up on, on the, the Facebook groups. Um, and don't forget to go out to our website. The link's in the description below with our traceable and all the materials and everything you're going to need out Plus there. Plus, you can upload your own artwork into the gallery and see other people's artwork. Just yep. upload and upload all your art. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Have fun. 
It's super fun. You'd be like, I secretly had this all here. Yeah, and, and it's it's uh, we got there's you know, I have to say our, our website's coming along. We got some really neat features that have been percolating on there, and uh, more and more here as December comes to uh, to a close. I think we'll see more stuff. So I'm gonna just real quick use my original canvas to help me sort of talk about a couple of things and my ruler. So I'm gonna say that you know I've got a couple inches down there and almost not quite three inches here. Right, so I've got to make this hill come down. And the hill really starts at about, I know I'm measuring this all crazy, at just under two inches over. Um, Stephanie had a quick question while you're drawing that in. What is the difference between value and tone? Or, or, or tone, hue, and value? Tone, hue, and value. So um, to tone something is to lighten it with white. To shade something is to darken it with black. Um, to a uh, uh, hue is the exact color. So phthalo blue is the hue, Mars black is the hue, and um, value is how light or dark something is. Sorry, I just had to like sometimes like I totally get the question, but it's remembering all the order that right. it's done in. So I'm gonna come over a couple inches um, on the right hand side. I'm gonna come down no more than about three inches, right, and back up to about a couple inches over here kind of making this first sense of a valley right so we need this first sense of a valley and you can use measurements so you can be like I need three about here and I need about two something there so you can always sort of get that going now over here on the right hand side and I'm gonna move my wolves in a little bit so I can do it easier right about here which is, let me tell you, just in case you're trying to block in, for me, it is one, two, uh, two and a half inches up is what it looks like to me. And in centimeters, I don't know, I'd have to go the other way. My ruler is not conducive for this activity. <laughs> let me do this here. To my mark. Now I have the exact thing. So I've got, oh, here we go. Much better. Now I'm not doing it backwards in my head. So it's actually just under, if you look at this four inches and it's just under 10 inches on the ruler. We'll do the same here. Just make sure we got it. Yeah, it's right about three here. And it is just right at about two there. Make sure we're good. I could go down a little more on my hill. So it's okay to always check what you have and measure it out. Blocking in takes a little more time. Sometimes we're going, but it can be nice in our final result. Now this hill that I have here is going to come over and swoop down into my little clouds. They're going to be like here and here. So you just got to have this hill put in. And this top part and then the next part you need to think about and I'm going to use you wouldn't have to use your t-square for this I just have trouble with level lines um, at about let's look at this at about four inches up here is where the cloud bank starts and the mountain goes up so I'll just we'll say about four and I'm gonna just make a little chalk line across. And this is gonna just help me sort of keep track of a few of the things that I have a going on in my painting. And I might even seeing this because I want my hill to be a little higher than that. I'm going to bring my hill maybe like this and then down. So I'm gonna bring it up. So I want my hill to be a little higher than when I know my cloud bank is going to be dropping. So you can drop your hill or drop your cloud bank. But that's how you want things to sort of be played out on your canvas. Little scoop here, little line here to tell you that mountains are ending. Little rock here for our howling wolves to be buddy buddies on. And we're excited about that, right, buddy buddy? Yeah. Buddy buddy buddy, sip the coffee. Get ready to go put out some zinc, guys, mm -hmm. if you have it. I have my coffee. So zinc is one of those tools that makes, um, well, we got some Holbein zinc. All the, all the paint brands are uh, interchangeable. 
unless otherwise stated. So I'm gonna put out some more zinc. I'm gonna put out some more titanium. And these two colors are gonna get me through all the next parts of my painting. I'm gonna grab a number eight cat's tongue. You could use any brush. You could use an eight bright. You could use a big round. You could use a bristle. This is not a brush specific technique. You just want a tool you feel super comfortable with. And I'm gonna get a little of my zinc and a smidge, just a smidge of your background because look, it's so easy to tint your color. And I'm gonna start coming here. I'm going to kind of create right over my first color that I painted this soft little streak of foggy clouds. Can you see these happening? Yeah. So it's very soft here. It lightens this area up just a hair. And the way that the zinc is like streaking, it does feel like you're looking up and seeing sort of a foggy sky. And it's okay to paint down below just a little bit your chalk line. You're going to want to know where that is. I'm going to put this aside for a second. Now that I have this, I have to think about my first runs of hills and effects that are happening here. And to do the first farthest layer of your um, trees, I think it's a good idea to use a small bright. You could use a small round, but you've got to make some distant foggy trees. And to do that, I'm going to pull up my, my base color, my main color, and I'm going to lighten it with my white and I want it to be a shade darker and it, the reason it's nice to do right here is because this helps me I'm going to make it a shade darker but not too dark than my background color see how we're getting there yeah one shade one value all right so load up your brush and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to make a little mountain line. Hopefully you guys can see this. It's going to kind of come down. Oh, to about the center point and then kind of stop. I'm going to dip my brush in water to improve the flow. I'm going to keep using my titanium. And I'm going to make far away little tree shapes. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to tap out little distant kind of pine shapes. Can you guys see this? At the top of this hill. Some of them will be taller, some will be shorter. You're painting like little mini pines. So you just this is almost like Tenenbaum, our uh, Christmas tree where you're yep. just stroking out a little bit to the side. You make little taps and then you stroke out a little bit. And your big thing here on these hills is to make this line a regular. Right? That's what you're wanting to do. You want to make this line a regular. Make it just kind of uneven. If you need a smaller brush, get a smaller brush. You know, just whatever lets you paint these little spiky tops the best that you can. You know, tap them out. Make those little kind of implied pine tree. These are, they don't even have to be that detailed because they're so far away, right? More important is that you get the sense of that tree line and it's uneven. And you're going to take this all the way down where you've got your little line. You can make some of them a little lighter and some of them a little darker, but they really should be fairly in relationship to each other about the same. Especially far away here. A little short one, maybe a couple little short ones. It's always good to make some short little values. And you can see this is not the most detailed trees that you've ever, ever seen, and they shouldn't be this far back. They should not be that detailed. A lot of times these types of photos are Photoshopped, and elements are artificially faded and layered. And the only issue with that is is sometimes they don't show you the atmospheric perspective of how things would actually look. So they'll be in too much detail or not enough detail. 
And you've got to be thinking about those things and be like, oh, that photo doesn't look quite right. Why? Oh, because it's got too much detail right there. And then you make the adjustment in your painting. Because a photograph will be forgiven, a painting often won't. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm just making sure I've got these little lines just coming through here. I'll solidify it. It's going to come up a little bit now, just a smidge. Now that you've got it to there, you can take it up a little bit, just a smidge. I'm just remixing my color, and I've got it right here, so it's easy to do. I'll make a nice tall little tree. There we go. Our tall little friend. Just making these little trees. These will help the very dark hillside that we have over here sort of stand out. As what it is. So we're just talking about our little little tree friends up at the top. They're, they're growing. They probably have some frost on them. Short friends. All trees have short friends. Coming here. You can just see it's not about like anything particularly in this line of shapes. And you can even be super soft about it as it gets further away. So once I have that, I'm going to just sort of rinse this off. I'm going to get my cat's tongue again, pull a little bit of my dark paint and my white paint and make the color again, but more of it. And I'm going to make sure that below my trees, I have a little bit of this continuing down. You see that? Oh, yeah. And continue this down. And I'm just sort of going back and forth on the edge of my brush. If you were using a, a bristle bright, you would just scumble back and forth. Using around, you just softly. Just making sure. A little bit here coming down. And you want it to be the same value as the trees in front of it. So for this painting, you know, it's good just to be able to, to mix a little paint and make the same shade gray. And if you've been trying to practice that skill, this is good for that. So I'm taking this down because the next series of hills will have to be darker. And you've got to sort of pull this as it goes into a darker aspect. I'm just trying to make sure it's soft and I'm not making specific shapes in regards to anything I'm seeing here. Mm -hmm. Now, fun times, you got to dry this a little bit. <laughs> All right. So while she's going to dry that, excuse me. While I try to speak with some articulation, I will say, Hello! And how are you guys doing today? I'm very happy that you have decided to paint, because every day is a good day when you paint, right? So, uh, well, she's back, so yeah, okay, just in a minute. Just a little bit. Just you a little just bit. want to make sure that your paint is uh, solidly affixed to the canvas. We don't want any lifting. Solidly. Mm -hmm. Solidly. Now, uh, solidified because you, we're about to scumble. Now, you've talked about what happens. It's called something when it doesn't stick. Underbinding. That's it. Underbinding. That's the word. So I'm going to take a number four cat's tongue. You can use a cloud here if you do it softly. Like if you use one of my cloud scumbles, you'd have to do it um, softer because these are a strong brush. It's a very light stroke if you're doing these. Right? They're good for this, though, because they'll take the zinc and they will scumble you a beautiful bang. If you don't have one of those, you can take a bristle brush, a bristle bright, any brush that you dry brush with and scumble with. And if you haven't heard scumbling before, that's that sort of scratchy, scruffly, circular little paint effect that we do in a dry brush method. But what we're really doing here, and you can see me doing this, is we're adding a little fog. Can you see the little fog coming in? Yeah. Zinc is my friend. Now, 
I know that you said that uh, a lot of landscape painters use zinc yes. instead of titanium white. Now, Well, they'll use both, but they'll actually use zinc as their primary white and then only use titanium for certain specific accents. Now, similarly, uh, isn't there a, a some some landscape artists use Payne's gray instead of black? Uh, some landscape artists won't use black. Period, and they and they make chromatic blacks. Hmm. Um, they wouldn't use Payne's gray, but they. I mean, they could. Uh, but generally, the the landscape artists that are very anti-black will do chromatic blacks and do color theory for shadows. So you'll see blue or purple shadows instead of. Things being darkened with black. Hmm. And chromatic means you just don't use any black pigment. Gotcha. All right. I might even lighten right here kind of a bit between. I'm taking the fog up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So these guys in the center are going to get lightened just a, just a smidge. I mean, they're going to be there very faintly. You see how this is working? Mm, yeah. Fun stuff. So once I have that through, right, mm -hmm. once I have all that through, I'm going to come and put some more little trees over there. And they need to be a bit darker than um, these ones here in front of them. So let's add a little paint to our brush. I'm going to just use this number four cat's tongue. And we're going to make it a darker shade than the one we just did, right? Yeah. Not the darkest shade we have but darker, so it should be noticeable. Let me pull this out, I gotta make it a little bit darker. It should be noticeable in front of these trees, and we're gonna come right here, so here's the valley. I want you to take a sort of like implied hill. See how we did there? Make a little hill. And then let's plant some trees. I'm just making sure my brush is loaded. I'm going to put some trees here. And I think I'll just put the trunks at first. So I have some nice variances. You know, with what's going on. And then I'll fill in. I just want to make sure. It's happening. I'm just pulling out these nice little, little more defined trees. Just pulling that little stroke out. Every brush paints a tree. <laughs> right? Because you're really painting the tree. It's you. I'm just pulling this in. See, it's just darker. I'm taking this down. Right here. And I'm sort of, you can see I'm just doing this dash. I'm making this sort of uneven line. That's going to be in the fog, but it's nice to have there. I'm going to start scumbling my little mountain bit here down, mm -hmm. probably, like you do. Making it more of that same color. And again, remember, it's okay if a couple of your trees are darker, or a couple of your trees are lighter. It just pushes, it pulls some forward and pushes some back. So don't get too stressed about that, unlike what it's doing to your visual line. Be more concerned about the piecing together, the layering, and the shapes that are necessary to pull this off. Now I'm going to do that same thing I did there, which is sort of this little dashing stroke that continues it on, but in a very nondescript little manner. Got this here. Pretty good. Now we need a couple more little dark rows there, don't we, as our trees come forward. How's everybody doing? Really like, good. Treeing it up. This is this is fantastic. Everyone's like, How, you keep answering the questions right before I ask. Them. Oh, are, am I? <laughs> yeah, you're like you 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 just like you you anticipate what their questions are going to be. We try, we try. Pretty easy to sympathize, right, with what people are going through. But it's so great that they ask them because sometimes people can have an experience I can't predict remotely. You know. It's very different teaching in person and teaching over YouTube. They're very different experiences. I'm going to just make some slightly darker. And this is what I'm doing. I'm just making sure it's darker than what's in front of it. Little trees that are kind of coming here. These are soft light. Not too terribly thought about trees. 
Just put some down. Dipping in my water, swirling it around to thin my paint, and loading back up, which is pull, 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 pull. I'm starting to talk about that more because so many people are saying my paint isn't going as far. So I'm starting to narrate, like, everything I'm doing, not, you know, not because I'm crazy, but because I know sometimes at home you may not be aware of how much I'm adding water, how much I'm adding medium, how I'm loading the brush. These things might, you might be very far in your painting journey and still struggling with brush load. Have a lot of skills and be like, I st just have trouble getting paint on my brush. Just pulling these guys. Making sure that they're, I like to come through and like create like little lines so that they, even though they're here and they're clearly trees, we just want some of it to be a little loose and not totally detailed. So the things that we detail tend to pop. Now, while this is drying, I can take advantage and come over here and do my dark mountain line. So we've got this drying. We're going to have to add fog to this in just a second as it pulls forward. Let's come over and talk about our much darker mountain line. So I'm going to pull my black into this. I'm going to, it's really not my black. It's my mix of phthalo, blue, and black into this. You can always just, there we go. So not our darkest color, but much darker and what we've been doing so far. And we're gonna come right off this canvas, kind of in front of this, right? It's gonna come down from this, come down here and sort of taper into the center space. We're gonna be dropping a lot of fog. I'm gonna put in a few detailed trees where I'm thinking about the branches and a little more of tree shapes. Yeah, I'm doing here. Just using the tip of my brush to talk about little tree shapes. You could use a detail brush. Just any br any brush you feel comfortable with will work. Here. Pulling that in. Maybe just making this sort of an uneven little space here. Tumbling as I go. You can see I'm just kind of pulling this down, aren't I? It's soft because of the way I'm going back and forth. I'm going wiggle, 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 wiggle. And it's soft. Isn't that nice? Yeah. It's also a good idea to pull out a little black because some of these will need to be more to the black than to the um, Salo Blue and Green mixture. So it's good to have a little bit out here. So you can go even darker in a couple of places. You'll have a couple pops of just really deep value, and that's going to give you a lot of drama. So good to have it around, man. Good to have it around. So it's a lot of a lot of this mix in some white. And we're making this dark kind of valued hill coming back here. We're just thinking about it. Now you're making little trees as you come down. Make a, maybe a nice big tree. Blend that into the mountain there. Now we're doing. Blending it in. And some more small trees, maybe, you know, in the shadow. One of the things that's important is that you kind of want all, most of your trees, not every tree, but most of your trees to sort of be vertical. So the hill comes down and they sort of grow straight up. Even though trees don't really grow straight up, it can be good to make sure that some of them are. Just adding a little bury that and take this hill down. So nice hill here. So this hill's drying, right, that we have. You know, just make sure you're happy with the line coming in off the canvas. You know, evaluate and be like, oh, I like that tree line. 
Does it look like a nice tree line? Yep. That's really what you're evaluating. I like the tree line. I, I like, don't the, tree like line. the tree line. <laughs> so I'm going to get a little of my um, zinc, but I'm going to add some of the tint to it. Can you see here? Just a tint, just a hint. So it's not as bright as bright as white. And I'm going to just tap and circle this up here. This has um, actually become like my one of my second clown brushes. Like I'm like, these are really great. Hmm. You know how it happens. Sometimes you're just going along, you're like, this is good at this too. I'm going to bring this up here. And what I'll say is be sure to fog out some of your trees, right? Because it's not like it just sits in perfect little banks doing what it's supposed to do. It, it moves around. It has, it has a lot going on. All right, so we've got that in. I like to sometimes get a little of my titanium. I'm going to come here with this more powerful space just right there in the center a little bit I'm tapping this in this sort of deeper value that's forming between these two shapes the other thing that you can do is you can take your if you have a cloud or you have a small uh, scumbling brush you can take a little titanium load it up so you've got this here this is a number four right and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap, 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 because I don't want just a glump of paint on here. I'm dry brushing. So I'm tap, tap, tapping. So that's what that good load looks like. I'm going to come at a extreme angle to the canvas. I don't want to be vertical. And I'm going to just artfully, and what I do is I do little circles and offshoot wiggles. I'm going to make some, not everywhere, but some titanium white highlights. Can you guys see that? Yeah. This is super important to the piece because it just, the play of values between these two things is fantastic. And again, I like, you know, you could use any brush you have with your titanium. I just really like this one because it's, it's a dry brushing superstar. So I'm just, you can see I'm at an angle and I'm just, not everything, right? It's little bits, little bits of, Highlight and that creates that bank. Does that not just blow your mind? Because I think that that's so cool. Yeah, how that happens. Look at, look at that. Just you're like, what? Yep. Clouded right in. Clouded right in. Okay, so now this is sort of dry. I'm gonna hit it with my hair dryer for two seconds to make sure because it's tough to dry brush over something or scumble over something if it's still at that tacky stage. All your brushes sort of stick into it, and you're like. When did this stuff become glue? And even if you use like glazing medium, there is a stage where everything is sticky as paint dries. Like right before it dries, it gets a little sticky. Yeah. All right, let's do this. So, oh yeah. Uh, in uh, I, Hey guys, I'm back. So while she's hair, hair drying that, I'll remind you, in the description below is a link to the traceable, which you uh, may or may not want to use uh, when we come up to get to the uh, actual drawing in of the... Uh, the wolves, ice wolves. So uh, we uploaded the traceable. It's on the website. You can find that by going to the description in the link below. Uh, and you can find the traceable, download it, print it, and use traceables. it. And she'll show you how to use it in just a few minutes. Traceables are so helpful. Traceables. Especially if you're not into drawing yet. Drawing can be stressful. But until you learn to do it, and then it's like super relaxing. You'll be like on a napkin going, I'm just drawing through this tense family meal. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to take my number eight and I'm going to load it back up again. When I'm loading a brush, I pull out and I flip over and I pull out. My brush is damp, but not sopping. And I'm going to come here and make sure some of this is definitely in a deep fog. And it can be good to even remember coming in and fog some of these trees, right? Not all of them, some of them. Just running along here, and I'm just wiggle, 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 wiggle. Up, down, wiggle, wiggle. Just sort of, maybe this, this is right here, a little tip. And now we have this next row. 
And I want to make sure that this is pretty deep up here because I've got to pop some trees out of it. So I've got to take this sort of milkiness down far enough. Then I load back up my little brush with some titanium. So I get into the titanium, I pull, 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 and I offload, I pull, 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 and I offload. So I have a nice dry brushing. It's pushed into my bristles, it's throughout the brush, and then I can come in. Give this some um, little cloudy nature. Clouds, fog, they are affected by wind currents and temperature. And if you just watch milk pour into your coffee, you'll see many of the same things that impact your clouds happening in that. And look at how the swirls are. Look at how they dance around and the different shapes that they make. And think to yourself when you're seeing that, when you see any like liquid poured into another liquid like that, think how would I paint that? And then next time you're out and you're seeing a fog or you're seeing something, you're driving in fog, drive careful if you're driving in fog. Um, you know, observe what happens to it as cars go through it. Hmm. You'll find road trips are much less boring. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to make some more little trees here that need to be peeking out, right? We need to have some little trees here peeking out. So I'm going to pull out my mix of phthalo blue and black and I'm loading up means you can go tap 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 and pulling pulling so even though I haven't grabbed that much paint I've really got it into my brush and now as I pull my white into it even as I'm mixing I'm still loading see how that goes so my brush is just getting full of some paint here now I have a darker color that I like and I'm going to come here and I'm going to say you know I feel like there's this other sort of weird little bank. So let's make a hill that comes like this. I'm sort of over. Maybe it has a little valley like they do. And down. There's a nice little bank. Let's paint in some trees. And I think these need to be a little darker than the trees in front of them. Just a hair. So that they pull as a different value. So pull these down. Little shapes. Little shapes of trees, narrow at the top and wider at the bottom. Pines are lovely little, little beings. Deciduous forests. Yes. Lest the deciduous forests, may they all be protected. You can see we're just pulling this down, making this next little bank. Of tree shapes. This one could be a tall tree. Either. Maybe just start with the, the little strokes that are sort of up and down that talk about a hill but don't necessarily show everything. And let's bring that back just a titch. So how's that looking? Evaluate. Oh, it's another little row, isn't it? Yeah, isn't this mountain really just nice. coming together. So I'm going to pull some more color on my brush. I'm dipping in water. I'm pulling out. And I'm stroke, 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 flip, stroke, stroke, stroke. And there I am pulling all my pigment into my brush. And I know I've got a couple little more bumps I need. I need a little group here. There, right there. And then there's another little group that kind of is right here. All right. So we have those two little, little fellas. Yeah, just making sure that that's there i'm going to blend these out just a titch soften it out as you come out this direction i'm wiggling back and forth and softening it out yeah that's how i'm getting that softness you can get softness in acrylic paint you can but you just have to understand the techniques that are required to get that effect little tiny trees right here Little row. I just make your little tree shapes. So now, um, when when you're talking about your brushes, if you don't have a particular brush, it's okay to substitute that with other things. Yes, yes. I personally 
don't have brushes where like to do the stroke, you would have to have that brush, right? Like to, to paint that object. You I don't have a, like I have a fan brush and it's fantastic. I and mean, if you've been trying to find one for heavy bodied acrylic paint, I've got the one. But all of my stuff is based on this is the shape of a tree. This is a value of a tree. I will tell you what I'm using. I hope I made good product, but you use what you have or what you have access to and you should be able to paint it too because they're brushes are brushes. It's the arts in you. Does that make sense? Totally. Oh, okay. But I'm proud of what I did. Super proud of it. Well, yeah, no, these great. are great brushes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's okay to buy, you know, to, to use brushes that make your, your tasks easier. But it is okay. Y you don't have to be obligated to use what mm -mm. what we're using. You just no. You just want a brush that lets you have control, so you can make these little shapes. You need to have a favorite scumbling brush. I mean, there's brushes you should have in your kit. You know, brushes that scumble, brushes that blend, brushes that are firm, so that you have lots of options in what you're doing. All right, let's put some little guys right here. Oh, that's a nice little. I'm making the edge of this hill sort of uneven. Can you see that? Yeah. Where I do this like little stroke. You could do this with a round. You could do this with a bright. You can do this with any brush. I like this one though. <laughs> Pulling this down. And I'm going to just bring this down here. A teeny, teeny, teeny bit. So I've got to add some fog here, but I have to sort of fog these out. So that's actually why I could put these two in relationship to each other, because this little bit has to fog out as well. I'm just making sure of a nice little hill line that I'm maybe blending out. And while this is drying so I can fog it, I'm going to come over here and do one of my darker rows of trees. All right. So this time, get your black into your uh, mix of phthalo blue and phthalo black so that it's a bit darker. You can add a smidge of your white to it, but you're looking for a darker paint. If you over darken at any point, the good news is, is you can come back and push it back with the zinc. So paint pretty confidently in what you have going on. I'm coming up from the upper right, and I'm going to bring down a little little mountainside like you do I'm gonna take this and kind of help enforce what's going on here right put this down a bit I just like to always push my color a bit as I'm coming down and that way each piece builds into the next piece so while I have it loaded, I just kind of come in and, okay. and I, don't you love how that almost makes a landscape on its own? It's like, it's kind of a landscape. You're like, it I could probably just together. do that and get a hill. That's pretty good. Yeah. I know sometimes when you're painting, you discover little events like that and you're like, that's kind of cool. That digs it. All right. Now I'm going to just tap and make sure my. My trees are sort of up and down, right? We don't want these guys to be not considered. And as I'm coming more into my focal area in a little area here, I'm going to make some more thought out trees. Loading up. You know, so some of these trees will always be a little more detailed. The trick is you don't have to detail every tree. You just need to detail enough trees. <laughs> and sometimes not dealing every detailing everything actually creates a more powerful feeling piece because the mind finishes a lot of the work that it sees. I'm just doing this right here and then I've got I'm going to have a little blank spot here that's a little more, you know, kind of indescript and we're not really sure what's happening there and then Let's also make one of these sort of un up and down. See the strokes? And then 
at the bottom as well. Some of these can be detailed. So you can see how some being detailed and some not really helps you. Let's make sure I've got this. Where's the next round of trees that I've got coming? I might need to pull this dark color down a bit to be able to keep, you know, doing my glazing. I'm adding a little white to it. So it's not my darkest value, but it's pretty dark. And I'm just bringing this whole sort of dark value with my number eight down. I'm not going to take this into the center valley because that'll ruin a lot of my lighting. And you don't have to be too precious with this part of the painting. So see how this is not my darkest value, but it's a darker value. So as I start painting this darker hill, I won't have to be working to keep dark in all of it. So at least get it down to about that far and that will help you quite a lot. Now this should be dry. So I'm going to take my number four and scumble up, make sure it's clean because I'm using the same couple of brushes. I'm going to load up with a little of my zinc white smidge, smidge of my background color. This also helps me pop a white white in an area. And I'm going to fog out with that. What I was doing there was just sort of offloading some of my trees. And come here and doing exactly what I've been doing. You know, you can come here as they come more towards the valley center and fog them out more. I'm gonna fog this out more at its valley center, huh? See how I'm pushing this back? And maybe this is in a deeper fog bank, so all of it has a little bit of this sort of mist on it, doesn't it? But it pops out a little bit. Let's look at that. Perfect. It's perfect. It totally works. So much fun to paint this. I can see why this does really well in watercolor on YouTube. And there's not that much on acrylic because it's not a speedy process. And that's some of what impacted the um, three hoot rating on the on the um, painting is that it just takes a minute to to do. I'm just being really strong on this right hand side. Can you see with my with my little zinc color? And I'm pulling down a whole nother level. Look at me go. Kind of you know below this. making sure that over here we just feel very cloudy yeah very foggy and this side is lighter than that side so that was another interesting dynamic that made this sort of a fascinating piece to work with i'm going to add a little more of my base color to my zinc it's an interesting thing here so this is my darker zinc right yep and that's going to let me come here and imply a darker area that's very soft. Can you see how I'm doing that? Now, Tracy was just asking Hi, about- Tracy. Well, too much color. Wait, when you're done wiping off the paint on that towel, uh -huh. um, do you just let it dry? Well, what? generally that dries, and then when my towels become sort of unusable, um, I put them in the washing machine, and they loosen back up. <laughs> and then I use them again. Yeah. So I'm just putting a little of this darker- See how that just creates a sense that things are, they're still foggy, right? But you can kind of see that that fog's a little different than the other fog that's around it, and that gives us some dimensionality, which we would have in our painting. I'll rinse out for a second. This should be all, I'm going to let this dry for a little bit and fog this side, right? And then I'm going to come back and hit with my cloud brush and my cloud brush over here. So. Maybe because this is so much bigger, I'll fog bigger. So again, I'm going to use this colored fog where I have a little bit of my base pigment in here. And I'm going to load up 
I'm gonna come from the side and this is still I'm on the side of my brush and I what I'm really doing is I'm just pushing some of this around like right here I'm gonna go between these two and lighten this space up so that some of this is Just wiggling it back and forth. I'm not doing really concentric circles. I know sometimes it looks like it is because you sort of see the brush wiggle, but actually what I'm doing is wiggling and pushing the brush in a very randomized way. So if you're getting like neat little tidy circles, that is playing against you a little bit. I'm gonna make sure I've got this down here in the center because this should be all, see how I'm doing? Really offloading a bunch of this fog in the center here because there's this foggy valley. Now I'm going to wipe off my brush. I'm going to just scumble the edge here so it's soft. So I can put other little dark shapes in it. And I feel like I lost an important dark shape up here. So if you do, I'm going to load my brush up while it's here with my dark color. And I'm going to, believe it or not, just scumble right back in to where I have my cloud. See how we're doing? making sort of this irregular shape. This keeps it looking all very foggy and integrated. And so though, sometimes it's good to come back with um, a shape and then be like, oh, it's gotta be like this. So I'm rinsing that off. The paint isn't dry on it. I'm gonna take my smallest cloud, my little friendly detail buddy, load, load, load. You can see me just pushing the paint all through it. So I'm going to be adding some of those details, some of the banks, okay? Just wiggling and pulling. And then the dry, it's like perfect. It just does strata, it just does these. So usually in acrylic painting, what you do is you have a palette knife and you come make these hard edges with that. Now it has this. It has it. Because it gives me these little lyrical bits. I'm gonna come in here in the center and and enforce this white bit. Can you see how we're doing that? Yeah. Isn't that gorge? I like it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Let's get my titanium white here. Pull, 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 pull. So then when you do the titanium white, you can see that it's just even more of a pop. Look. Is that just, oh. It should feel almost like a river of cloud is coming down between the two hills. It really does. Now I've got a little of my titanium white on this brush and I'm also gonna grab a little zinc. I just kinda want somewhere between these two. And I'm gonna come here and I'm going to just make sure that some of this also has some value and dimension that I'm liking. I'm gonna pull some of that Fog between the two. And I did that. Making sure. Sometimes it's fun to like swirl it up a little bit. See that there? Yeah. The stroke I really like. And it it feels very emotive to me. And I like those little strokes. This is called a passage in art. And I just like this little passage. That's any little bit that you think you just like nailed strokes and all the composition. So it kind of becomes like poetry. Seems pretty random when you're in a gallery if you don't know that. And then they're like, what's this passage about? I think I need a little bit of this defining element here, but I'm going to do it with my zinc. Because this is a further backspace. And I'm actually going to put a lot of it here at the base. Look what I'm doing. Not so much through the whole thing. And this is just my zinc. Which is, by its nature, a little more transparent. The passage just gets better and better. So look at that. Oh my gosh. It's just, oh, I'm going to sip my coffee mm -hmm. before I get to the next bit. And we're actually pretty close to being done with the hill. Yeah. That was looking, the thing. It's looking really good. Lots of little trees. Lots of little fog banks. Lots of little zinc and titanium whites. But see, it's doable. It's achievable. Sometimes you look at pictures like this and you're like, I don't even know how. Like, how would you even do that? I'm not even sure. This is how you do it. Wow. Huh. That's pretty been? awesome. Yeah, this is pretty awesome. I need some bubbles, baby. You need bubbles? Bubble right, me, bubbles. baby. Where's my bubble?
my arrows. Bubbles. It's Texas so nice. snow. It's so nice to have them back. <gasps> oh, I've, I've all forgotten. is right with the world. I don't want to spill my coffee on any of the equipment. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's nice to get our bubbles. Look, we actually went through quite a bubble shortage here. I guess once mm -hmm. once summer rolls out, then all of a sudden they stop uh, they stop making bubble stuff input so i mean like we went to all of the local stores they were out we went actually had to go to party city your, your mom went my mom she? went to party yeah. city because she wanted to have bubbles for her uh her front yard display when we did the when we did her uh she, she's got a decorating your, contest your decorating contest area, so like we brought that. bubbles out and dress oh. up the kids and send them over like fairies to accompany the decor it was pretty awesome <laughs> they love it all right so got a lot of bubbles on the canvas but we're okay because these will dry off oh. See, that's one of the dangers of bubble parties. Bubble party is on the canvas. It's okay. It'll dry. So this is a good example why glycerin and paint. No. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> glycerin, don't add it. I'm going to finish this little group out because there's not that much to do over here. And then I'm going to come over here and finish out this little bank. So... I'm going to, I think, do this bit that's kind of right here. Let's see what you're doing over there. I'm going to take a little of this. I'm loading up my brush. Load, load, load. A nice load on it. It needs to be dark, but not my darkest color, so I'm going to add some white to it. I have a dark color, but not my darkest color. I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to sort of talk about... The hill right here. Sort of comes down into this. All right. Let's paint some trees. I'm going to make a little vertical tree here. Maybe it goes above this. Because it's closer, right? They're kind of becoming more detailed a little bit as they come forward. Load, 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 load. <sighs> These two little friends are almost the same size, which means I need to put some friends around them that are not. Otherwise, this will feel like a very unthought of hell. I'm going to just make sure I, I go back and forth and soften this down through here. Like you do. So I'm softening my hell. Dipping in the water and reloading so I have enough paint. So another thing to think of is that your hill shape, right, isn't necessarily where the trees are growing out of. It's the line that's helping you create a tree line. So what you wouldn't want to do is plant your trees at the top of the hill and grow them as you know what I mean, and size them from there. Just let the hill tell you how tall they'd be. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I'm just like coming right here. So what, what I'm getting is still a lot of the detail I've worked hard to get. Let's bring some shape, some uneven shape back here. Let's also make sure that we have a few uneven little shapes coming down here. And we're just doing that the little dashing stroke. To make sure that that is pretty well thought out. Softening this. And then we have another really dark little group. So I might even grab my black and work it into it. Dip my paint in the water. Load, 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 load. Let's come off here and make a fairly dark and focal set of trees that are a little closer in this bank. So I'm going to pull this tree up. This is going to be the star of this hill. A little happy starring tree. Now, do you pull dip your up. brush in water every time you reload, or just does it depend on how much water is in the brush? What I what I do is um, it's it's often, it's not necessarily every reload, but it's more often than everybody thinks, which is why I'm starting to go dip my brush in the water and reload. <laughs> so that even if it's not on camera 
in the new studio, I think a lot of this will be on camera. But even if it's not on camera, you guys are seeing, I'm getting some more black here. Seeing what it takes for me to get my brush to do all of this. That way you don't mistakenly think there's something crazy about your painting. And see, these are not different from the pines we just did at Blue Lake. Kind of similar little fellows, right? Mm-hmm. Little, little scruffy fellows. I'm going to dip my brush in water and thin out and get some more black. And the reason is, is that I was losing my point. So see how I'm pushing out? Yeah. I'm going to reload. Sometimes as the paint moves up your brush, it will start to flail it out and make it less uh, detailed. So this one I'm thinking about a little more when I'm painting this little tree. Okay, A little more tree-like. This little grouping here is maybe more thought out as a group of little trees. Little dark little trees. Bring this down. A little tapping. A little relaxing. Okay, so a lot to work through here. I'm going to definitely want to soften this hill a little bit right here. And I need to fog up. I'm going to just take this out a little bit. There we go. I'm going to fog up. This creates this layering where I can come underneath and really, you know, determine a lot of stuff about it. So I'm going to... Load up my number four, actually, which is a little more detail with some fog. I'm going to add just a pinch of color to it. And I'm going to, at first, come here and soften out this hill. If I need to pull this down into these trees to make sure it feels integrated, I'm going to do that at this stage. All right. I'm going to kind of come over them a little bit. And now I'm going to work up this fog. See, I'm working this fog. Oh, yeah. Now, as I come here towards the valley, we're going to definitely go right over these trees. And right over a bunch of these trees. Now we're going right over everything. Load up. Just making sure really thought out in the center here. Another little load over this. Comes back, but not up here because these need to stay in focus, right? I'm going to let this rest for a minute. I'm going to get my big boy. I'm going to fog out the rest of this, which is a smidge of our color into our zinc. And I'm going to be doing the same sort of motions I did with my little brush with this big one, making these little banks with my wiggle motion. My wiggle motion makes fog banks. Does your wiggle motion make fog banks? I hope so. I hope so. But don't give up, even if it's like unnatural at first. This is something, this is a skill you've got to practice, like a pretty handwriting or anything else. It just requires a little, a little attention and then you'll have it. Just making sure that this is pretty foggy here as we're coming forward. And I might as well, even though it's dark down here, there's this sort of lighter fog. So I'm going to get a little of my color and my zinc and just make sure that the base of this hill has this first kind of blush of this lighter fog. I will be coming back and talking about again, but why not put it in while we're here? And save ourselves. So see how I'm like wiggle, 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 and I just sort of use this to make sure I'm making very random shapes. Yeah. I can always come back. And do other things with it. But it's really nice. Just kind of make some random shapes. All right. Now that I have that going, I'm going to rinse this out. And I want to 
look at this again. Do I feel, let me look at it from a distance and I got to evaluate how I feel that those two peaks are pushed back. If I'm happy with how they look, if I'm happy with the values, if they feel too startling, like how do I feel about them? If I feel okay, which I do, I'm going to take my little cloud brush and I'm going to come load with my, my titanium, which was the press off to get it all into the bristles nicely, right? Um, one of the things that I like about this particular tool is that if you're very heavy handed, it won't break. Right? The bristles are pretty sturdy. But what you want to learn is to be on your angle and just very lightly dancing over a dry canvas. Dance it over a dry canvas. Now see how I'm coming along here like there's like almost uh, waves in the fog. I'll make this like a little bit up here. Not everywhere, just a little bit. So we've got a little bit going there and here and just a little. Oh, gosh. And you back up for a minute. It's like so stunning, right? Oh, yeah. And pull this in. My paint is already starting to skin. Acrylic paint dries. Don't feel like you're crazy. It's what it does. Just coming out here, and just kind of extending that little bank, a titch, maybe another little conversation here. A little zinc now, just to do something lighter as I make sure that my valley is sort of filling up. Is my valley filling up? I'm using the zinc for this part because I'm going to be coming back with some titanium white to really pop it over on the dark side, but. On the dark side, come to the dark side. We have cookies. All right. How is it going for you guys? You ready to put your dark trees in? Yes. This is really great. I mean, the it's how it's done. Is fantastic. It's just all, it just builds and builds and builds and just looks cooler and cooler. Okay. First row back, back trees. Like, you should be like, I don't really know about this. That's, that's where you should be with the back trees. I don't, I don't really know. It's very uncomfortable. Seen her paint other things. Probably she can paint this. Thing. I don't even. And then as you build forward, you're like, you you start like ramping up like Allegro, and you're like, but I'm the I'm sorry. No, it's pretty awesome here. Okay, <laughs> grab my number four, my number four friend, and I'm gonna load up some very dark paint. I'm gonna go right into just my Thalo blue, Thalo green mix. I mean, a Thalo blue Mars black mix. I'm gonna load up and dip. And I'm pulling out and see how the, it's the combo of the water. My paint has gotten really kind of thick. And so as I'm, the longer I'm painting until I push out fresh, by the way, I need more water. Oh, yeah. That's another thing that will impact me significantly. So I'm going to come right here along this little bank. Actually, give me just a second. I have to do something. Hold this brush to the side. Because I'm seeing something that's going to mess y'all up. So I want you to just load up with some... A little of the color and some zinc. And just make sure that you are, see I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. You've got a nice kind of cloudy looking bank to paint into. You're going to come back and define some of it, but just, just a touch of that so that later you're not trying to piece it in. And we'll come darken this back up, up here. As we're going, we just want to make sure that there's this kiss of this fog. Because now you're getting into some complex shapes. And up here, it's real easy to fix and resolve, but you want some of this thing in this space. Now that you've got that, take the brush that you just so carefully loaded, and you get to make some cool shapes. So let's make a little, little run there, there, and then right there. And then maybe a little there. I'm going to come slightly under this, up a bit, and then really down in a very steep way. Hopefully that's steep enough. And then just very lightly here, I'm going to just barely 
talk about some trees because these are going to be really fogged out. They they wouldn't be as distinct as their friends that are really out of the fog, are they? Yeah. So you've got to paint the trees that are totally immersed in fog a little less thought out. I'm going to just make sure that this bank comes down a bit. Put a couple little bows there. Comes down. I'm just bringing this up. I'm just making this little ridge that we're we're aware of. Float up again. And say that right here, maybe a little bit, a little little patch of something's happening. Just a little bit there. Now here, we're going to talk about some trees. So I might even get some black on my brush. And I'm going to soften the top of my hill with treetops. Little treetops. And see, I'm just kind of pulling out. These are a little more detailed, but not completely. Making sure this is a nice little uneven little hill. Trying not to run my hills into each other. Tipping the top of it like you do. I'll come here and... Make sure that this has a bit of a dark hill with it. And so now I have something I can kind of paint into the fog. They're darker, they're coming forward, but we gotta knock them back, right? Yeah. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna dry them real quick, and then we're gonna put our next level of fog, and then our last little banks, and then we're on to our cloud valley wow. and our wolves. Wow, this is coming going really fast. I know, it's like, uh, you know, it, we've already been here just, you know, just a bit, a little, little bit over an hour, and man, I'm, I'm, I just love how these layers have come together, and uh, sort of impressed by all this. So I, I, I love watching this stuff, and I love to see what you guys do too. So please share up your paintings, um, link them up to us on Facebook, on our website, yardsherpa.com. You can find links to that in the description below, along with all the resources and things that you might need to paint this on your own. Um, we try to make that a, a good resource for you. So. How's that going, guys? Is, are your They're very excited. Super foggy? Every, everybody loves this. This is I, really good. I'm really loving all the challenges you guys are taking on. Like, it has been great on the website to see your paintings go up. It mm -hmm. has been fantastic on the groups to see your paintings grow up, the fan page, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. I love seeing them. And I have been really like, well, if you can do that, maybe we're going to do this other thing. I didn't even know you could do that. So let's paint something underwater. <laughs> mm, not that we haven't done that before. There's nothing more complicated. Uh, just uh, answering a question here. Uh, no, no, it's just they're impressing me so much. Oh, no, it's great. See, I love being here in chat because I'm also answering questions in chat and hanging out. And, I'm going to move to my slightly cleaner water. You know, the that uh, it's it's just as it's really nice hanging out. I was just actually answering a question here to, to, to Crazy Daisy, who's asking on our website. Hi, Daisy. So, how you doing? It's, it's good to see everybody out here. Thank you so much for everything. So, but yeah, they're all they're they're enjoying this. This is great. All right, I'm going to get my brush tipped with just a little bit of the color. I've got my number four cat's tongue. I'm loading this up. I want a pretty light fog, but it still needs to have some pigment in it. Yep. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to just, you know, do the little brush wiggle that you do. Just pull that up. Like, I go up. You can kind of see, like, when I'm doing these, like, how I kind of make sure that my lines are not just repeats of each other and that they're... It's somehow slightly believable. I might push this back. See, I'm pushing that back into the fog a bit, but not completely. And then I'll take some of these trees into the fog, but they're there. Yeah. And wander up this. See, my fog bank kind of traveled down the hill and wandered a little bit. Look at this fog wander and just kind of push it in like you do. Sometimes it's hard to think, how do I paint something I don't see, right? I'm going to, while I'm here, I'm going to take a little of my base color and some of my zinc and mix kind of a darker zinc. And I'm going to make sure that I'm, I have some of these deeper values. Can you see how this value is deeper? 
coming down this hill. Because it's in fog, you want fog, but you need some deeper foggy values. Deeper everything values. Just be sure that you're building, building, building your stuff so it feels like it can be, can be there. I'm going to rinse out. And while it's still wet, I'm going to indulge just loading up my brush a bit over here. And making sure that I've got some little lines of, see I'm just making those little lines of fog kind of hidden into the mountain. And that's about the, the paint is sort of wet and so you can do that at this stage. And it just creates some believable texture that I think is super duper lovely. All right, I'm going to, just looking at that, I'm going to very lightly dry brush up here. It's just barely kissing it. And maybe lightly dry brush back here on the back side of this one. And then on the back side. So this is, my brush isn't very wet. There's a dusting of pigment. Mm-hmm. This is just almost like putting on a little blush. I just wanted to push it back. Can you see just a touch? Yeah. Sometimes it's important. You got to look and be like, hmm, I don't know. All right, let's make some distant little hidden foggy trees. I'm loading up with my base color, and I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to just take a little foggy bank. Foggy bank. A little foggy bank. We don't really see this as well. It's just a maybe there in a the little foggy bank. A little thought, a little consideration. I'm gonna take my black and my base color because I'm going much darker right here. I'm gonna come under this guy and come down, up. The little mountain kind of rises up, and then it really goes down. And then it's going to come just a little bit across the valley this way. Like you do. See how that, yep. So the first stage would be to make sure that I've got a little value happening here. A little bit lighter back here. You know, you can even kind of go tree, 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 tree. We're going to push a lot of that back with fog. So just be like tree, 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 tree. Not so much. Some sort of bushes, you know, maybe it's just not that well conceived or thought out. You're pushing this down a little bit into your first little blush of fog bank. See how I'm doing? Yeah. Now here, I'm going to go ahead and put a little white into my mix. And the reason being is that, yes, this is down here, but it's lighter. So I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that this part of my mountain, which is here, and, and just barely showing, right? And that's why the trees are so fuzzy on this little part here is because they're really in the fog. I'm going to just make sure I push that down a little bit, scuffling back and forth, back up into my mountain a little bit. See, it just, isn't it interesting how it just starts to be a thing? Yeah. I'm going to rinse out. I'm going to get my water on my brush, a, a lot of black, some of my mix. And I'm going to make a few really thought out little trees. The fine lines. And lots of little branchy details, right? Yeah. That's all it takes. So I'm just. Little branchy details. Little branchy details pulling them out. We remember pines. Pines are have the heavy branches that kind of sometimes bend down. Little breaks, little, little thoughtful bits. You know, so you want to make sure that you just talk about that a little bit, the, the detail of the pine. This one has got like a lot of trunk showing. See how he is? Yeah. He kind of comes down into the space a bit. The little guy right there. Maybe some of this right here. Super fun to do. All right, how are we doing? We're doing so good. Maybe put one sort of thought out one right here. There we go. 
Little forest. Load, load, load. I might need some water. And I'm needing water because my paint is drying on my palette. Like probably to do the second half, I'll actually have to put out fresh paint. Um, that's just because as I'm going, my palette dries. Now, there's some solutions to that. If you like them, there's a thing called a wet palette. Keeps your paint wet during. There's a palette wetting spray. I haven't had a lot of success with it. My, my cap is clogged like in every single... I, I kept buying it, and then it kept clogging, and eventually I realized that there was no version of it <laughs> that I was going to personally be able to keep unclogged. It was a little sad. I really wanted it to work for me. Hmm. Might work for other people, just did not work for me at all. I'm just pulling these little shapes here that are making sure that this feels like kind of a forward facing hill. And I'm even pulling down some extra value just to make sure that some of this feels. Closer and craggy and defined. So we have to dry that to mist it and push it back. So let's hit our hair dryers. John gets to say hi, hi to you every time I do this. <laughs> so that's always good. And I'm going to dry this real fast. Hello, guys. So, yep, while she's mounting or while she's, uh, you know, getting that all uh, uh, dried off and uh, making it so that uh, we, we can get it uh, not have underbinding when she's doing the next layer. That's uh, that's largely why she why she just goes through and makes sure that uh, we get a, we get a little uh, little dried off. So you know, yeah. but you know, as we said before, all the materials and links are in the description below. Don't forget to do the social things like like, comment, subscribe, share. Oh, you yeah. know, we forget to ask about doing those types of things, but you know, you should do. If it's you have always time. helpful, and sometimes YouTube will tell you when I'm on. Yeah. Hmm. Not always, just sometimes. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get my brush wet again and drag off the extra water. <laughs> I'm going to load my zinc. And it's okay that there's a little pigment on my palette that's coming into it because this will be much lighter than what's around it. I'm going to start pulling a little bit of a cloud bank. And this is going to be about letting some of the dark show and some of the light show and pushing up some of this and... I think it should kind of come up in maybe between these two little fellows and up, 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 up. Is the, you know, the bank does its thing, right? Yeah. So right. subtly, those darker values that you have underneath, they imply things, which is sort of nice. And Julie really likes it, the, with the, how it zooms out. And you can see it so nice. Yeah, it's amazing. Because like when you're up on it, sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, this feels like a hot mess. And then you're like, you zoom and you're like, oh, so I push that back into the cloud bank, pushing this cloud area forward. And I'm just making sure that my cloud shapes are good. And so when you're talking clouds or fog, again, you're trying to talk banks and highlights and lowlights. And what you really want to avoid is doing this. That won't help you at all. So it doesn't help me. And also doesn't work great on the brush. So what you really want to do is load, 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 load. Make sure you're sort of pushing and pulling this edge. That's what I'm paying attention to is this little line that happens right here. Not this down here, interestingly enough. I'm making sure that my forward edge feels organic. We have the wolves back here. You have to paint it somewhat because you don't know what's going to be showing behind them, depending on where you put them. But you don't want to, um, you don't have to worry about being a thousand percent awesome, perfect, everything right there. All right. So we have some cloudy mountains now. I'm going to grab my little cloud brush and put some focus on some of them. So I'm going to take my white and I'm going to load, load, load. It's skinning, so I have to be super careful of how I'm loading. I'm going to come to this forward facing edge. I'm going to make sure I've got some 
of this white color kind coming through here. You know, I'm pushing and creating like this. Again, it should look a little like a river coming down the mountain, but it's not. And I'm going to make sure that I've got some nice cloudy bits. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. And I'm just, I'm moving the brush around and I'm wiggling it ever so slightly and I'm making sure that I'm making random shapes and strokes. I'm finding those edges I was paying attention to. If your painting is slightly sticky, these can be more challenging. Because it wants to stick. And if it's too much of a challenge, you just dry your painting. I just want to make sure that I've got some, some little bits. All right. So what I was doing is just going through and finding little bits to pop and highlight so that those shapes become sort of identifiable to me. Hopefully everybody is like loving it. Yeah. All right. Fresh water, sip of coffee, second half of the painting. <laughs> second half. Second half of the game, the arts game. All you brave art warriors out there challenging yourself with mist and fog, you are amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you this for is a challenge. It's too. a mental and it's, a, it's an endurance challenge. It's a mental challenge. You know, you get a lot of benefit from it, but it's a lot. Can I get some fresh water, babe? Yeah, absolutely. Hold on. Thank you so much. So sorry. Is that okay? Thank you. Well, I mean, it's just... Yeah, that would be great. He's going to make me new coffee, and I'm going to enjoy my antlers and have a minute with you guys. I'm just talking. So one of the nice things about a painting like this, because this is a kind of very monochromatic painting. We're in the winter. The colors are muted. You're not having to deal with, like, a lot of color and mist. And so practicing your mist skills is a really good idea. Like one thing that you could do before you even start the painting, probably should say that at the beginning, but one thing you could do is create a bank of trees and keep practicing making lighter and darker banks of trees and then practicing pushing them back with your zinc before you try to put the whole canvas together. We forget that we can practice a skill. Like if it's not immediately like, gelling you can be like all right notebook of clouds i'm clouding till clouds are easy that's what i'm doing all i'm doing clouding cloud, 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 until i have it and it's just not a problem for me and what i will honestly say is it's a lot like sit-ups you got to do a lot of them for it to make any difference but unlike sit-ups it's super fun to practice clouds <laughs> just saying yes now everyone's loving the clouds as they've been coming together um, you, and, and so, uh, Glenda was just asking, could the background be used as an underwater scene also? Um, so differently. An underwater scene would be accomplished differently. You wouldn't put any of the fog in. You'd be toning everything with the primary color of the water. But you would do similar things in, like, objects that were further away would be very close to the base watercolor. And then as they came closer, would either become more colorful or darker. So mm. they become more colorful if you're talking shallow water that has uh, very little distance between the sunlight and maybe a coral reef. And darker if you're talking deep water. I have a whole quest on it. Oh. Like how to paint underwater, which everybody thought I was painting underwater. Kind of a bummer. I'm going to put out new paint. <laughs> <laughs> but I did not paint underwater. I painted a subject of underwater nature. Maybe we should get you some scuba gear and lessons and do an underwater painting. <laughs> I know. think Golden makes a tremendous, give me that picture in picture because I'm trying sure. to not put my paint out where I shouldn't this time. So put a little black here. That looks good. A little blue here. Also looking good. Dun, 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 and then put out my titanium white and my uh, zinc. Now, I had mentioned that it can be helpful to have the fluid white and the fluid black, which would be like a fluid paint like this or craft paint. And the reason for that is when we get into the wolves, there's some details. And sometimes as new artists, those detail lines, those small little 
Let me struggle with this cap. Is this not crazy? Um, the small lines, that stuff can be a lot to handle. This is my titanium and put out my zinc. So that's why I recommended those two products. But they are entirely optional to the project. It's just if you've been having a lot of struggles with your lines and you're trying to give yourself like an edge where I get to paint with my horse mug. I hand you my golden mug. So that's the paint out. This is mostly what we're going to be doing for the rest of this painting. I'm going to go ahead and mix my black and blue, right? You've been looking at the palette the entire time. Right. No, I... Have they? I think yeah. I've been putting out my paint and talking. Well, we'll hear about it in comments later if I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so. You'd be really good if you just switched from palette to main camera. If I, yeah. <laughs> I need to give you a pocket switching button so you can reach in your pocket painter, and just switch. But if you just stop talking, <laughs> <laughs> I would just be showing. I would not be teaching art. I would be showing art. Be the art show. The art show. I show you that I can paint, but I call it a tutorial so that you will accidentally be tricked to watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's happened to everybody here once. At least. At least. Okay, so I want to paint in this basic area before I use my traceable to put in my wolves because my wolves are pretty much my second to last thing I put in. So it basically goes put in my cloud bank, you know, getting in this hill here together, like we get those started in. When those are all resolved, then we put in our wolves. And when the wolves are resolved, we put in a last cloud bank. So let's start with our cloud bank that we have. Now, one thing that I liked is I had made this sort of a deeper, richer color. So I had sort of a darker band of color back here. And I kind of pulled it more into the blue up front. And then I started putting my clouds over it and also built my bank. So to get that done, let's do our first thing. We got our number eight brush or your bright or your round, whatever you're using today that gives you a good stroke and you have control over. And I'm going to pull out my base color. I'm going to add just a smidge more black to it than what I have. I'm pulling, pulling into the brush. I'm going to go into my titanium white. But I want this to be darker than my background color, right? Okay. So I'm going to dip in my water one more time. So I'm just dipping the tip of the brush in. By not dipping the whole brush in, I don't pull too much water into my brush. And I'm going to come across here and darken this whole value. See how I'm doing? Pull this across. You're going to be darkening this whole area like you do. Now you've got your little bank here that you're going to be painting in in a minute. But you want to darken that background just, just slightly because you're painting over it. And then you can pull some more of this into it and streak that across. It just, believe it or not, it helps for these low floating cloud banks. Now as I'm coming forward, I'm going to take a little of my blue and mix it into my base. See how that went more blue? It would be important for the wolves too. I'm going to add some white. And this front bank will be almost the same value, but much bluer. See how it's just much bluer? And I'm going to come under here this color just real fast. Just making sure this is here. And now I'm going to talk about this little bank our little friends are on. So this is going to start out a little more in the gray space. That way we can pop it with some blue. So I've got this nice darker gray color. Add some white to it. I'm going to come up here above my cloud line Pull down, all my strokes are going to kind of flow down. The other day, I'm going to flare this one out. My paint was loosely mixed, so there's almost a streaking that I have. Streaking actually helps me. Now we have this beginning of this cloud bank. As it comes forward, I'm going to pull in a little blue and a little of my base color. It'll be a little darker. There we're doing. 
going to help make sure that this feels even behind the cloud bank, just a little bit more in shadow. You can take this down here a little bit. So at this point, you should see the basic shape of your snowbank pulling in some white. I'm just making sure I've got some streaks. It should pull down like this so that you have that sort of implied already before you do another thing kind of feeling to it. All right, now I'm going to take um my hair dryer and dry this so i can put it in my clock all right i don't think it'll take too long for her to do that just touch that up oh. so i'll glance over here <clears throat> excuse me for a second Ooh, little sneeze um so again thank you guys for coming and joining us today uh this is the I guess uh, 11th day in the 12 days of Christmas. So tomorrow will be our last day. Go check out our website, theartshipper.com forward slash Christmas, and you can see all of those different events that we did. All 12. And tomorrow is a big deal, or at least it was for me. Can't yeah. wait till you guys see it. If you are in the military or have a military family, it is going to be a really exciting painting for you. Hopefully for everybody. But <laughs> So I'm pulling out my mix of one-to-one -one black and blue. And I'm going to add to this, I'm going to brush off so I don't have so much pigment on my brush. I'm going to pull in some of my zinc on my number eight cat's tongue here. And I'm going to just start to blur with this darker area. The line between where I put my darker in, you see I'm blurring it? I can zoom in on that. Ooh. So that's why a little pigment in your zinc here is super helpful. Because it'll start to let you blur that. Put that up here a little bit. You can go over your hill. You're going to be able to put your hill back so, you know, don't feel like, oh no. Say I can take this darker little range of something back here because I know I'm going to have what? My wolves. I'm just going to push this out. I'm just pushing this out. Push, wiggle, 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 pull. Wiggle, wiggle, pull. So already, I've started to create that transition from what's coming down the hill to whatever the valley is, and then these wolves are on another peak so that they could be there. I'm going to pull some more zinc onto my brush. I'm going to just wiggle and make sure I'm wiggling it. We've got this nice soft transition happening. Zink, 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 zink. And don't worry too much about the line of this hill because you're going to come back in a minute and sharpen that up. So that's looking pretty good. A little more zink, 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 zink. Making sure that this is layering up. So the transparency of it's very helpful. I'm going to come through here and I'm going to just, these are not peaked clouds. They're kind of like, um, it's like a blanket of dry ice. So you want to make sure that you're telling that kind of blankety story and then you come and enforce that with say, you know, your smaller brush and a little of your titanium. Right. There we go. I got to do these forward facing bits, these awesome forward facing bits. I'm not going to worry too much about this detail yet because I've got to still work out some detail on my hill. Mm -hmm. So to do that, I've got to put some of that in now while this is resting. I need this number eight and I'm going to get a little of my blue into my black. So it's a blue and black mix. So it's even bluer like you do Ooh. now. I like to wipe off just to make sure I don't have too much pigment in there, right? Don't have too much. Oh, hold on just a second here. Can you uh, check over here on the main camera? I think we may have lost a power switch there. Hold on a second. Uh-oh. What's going on? I am not sure. I'm like stuck. Is it frozen for them? It, not sure. 
I don't know if you can see me right now or not, but the switcher is just definitely stuck. So give me two seconds, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this, and right. we'll be back, back in just Hopefully a moment. you know we'll be back. We'll I be just back. saw this happen, so give me just a second. Try one more time. Hey! There it goes. It's back. Okay. So I took a little blue into my blue and black mix and blued it up a bit, and I've loaded it with a lot of white. I'm on the number eight cat's tongue. I'm going to, before putting in these banks, make sure that this hill is sort of talked about in a real way. So I'm going to first come along very lightly on the tip of my brush. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to make a hard edge. And I'm going to use this a little bit in the way that we think about a palette knife. So I'm going to take this at an angle. You can see I'm sort of at an angle on the angle of the brush. I'm going to just pull this down and come across here and pull this down, pulling this down. I let it be rough. Can you see how it's like a dry brush that I let be rough? Now, as I'm coming forward, I need to darken my color a bit. So I'm going to get a lot more of this color and a little of the black on my brush. And I'm going to make sure that this is here. But it's also done in a similar thing. So I haven't taken the white off my brush. And I'm just making sure. Sure, I'm going to wiggle this up. Pull this down. I'm darkening this side. I'm going to add a little water to my brush. There we go. Now we're doing yeah. So we're just pulling this down. Maybe pull some back up. So it can be good to take like, I'm going to take a little of my dark value here. And I'll pull some of that back up from the bottom. Pulling that back up here. I'm just making sure that it's feeling like some of this is in the dark and some is not. I'm going to take a little more of my blue. My black was a lot more blued up. Maybe my zinc this time. I'm going to just do some of that through here. Just some of it. Pulling that down. Come back with my white white. There we go. Little rough bits. I like the bit there to be a little more in light. A couple of more highlights. When that's all done, and you have the the implied snowbank, the implied top of the mountain, you're going to actually get a little of your pure blue and black that you've mixed together. And you're going to make some little dark marks here. So, so I'm doing the same thing. I'm just very carefully dry brushing out some little dark. Maybe a little over here, add another little dark, right? Do you see the dark? All right here, I'm going to just... A little dark mark. These are like little stones or something that's exposed around the cloud bank. And that can be a nice little touch um, to have little little touches of, believe it or not, a little touch of dark in the snow here and there. Sometimes helps your snow feel more like snow because it'll feel like you're seeing exposed rocks. I'm going to rinse out my brush, dry it off and put in my forward cloud bank. Yes. So I'm gonna take a little of my blue to my black. Doom, 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 doom. I'm gonna load up with my zinc. Now, if it's that blue, I'm gonna have to wipe off. Get some more. And I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna be like, telling a more determined kind of bank story. So see how I'm just pushing and wiggling it? And then I soften the bottom here, this sort of strong edge. And I'm going to take this right up to, you know, it kind of, they come around here. So we're going to just pull this around the side. Think of it like water hitting a hill. 
I just make sure I've got a little bit of this coming back. Soften that edge. And just wiggle it. And so you can see how the, the blue and the way the white is, it creates these little just wiggle, 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 up, down. But I swear it's the little jiggle in my hand that really helps me. <laughs> and then coming through and, and defining like brighter edges is also very helpful. So the little blue gets in there, lean into it. I'm wiggling it through. I'm going to go load back up in my zinc. I'm going to come over from the right. And start just talking about this bit of foggy cloud. And this is pretty much exactly everything we've been doing up on the hill. I'm just making sure that I've got some shapes and some edges and where I need to, I sort of smooth and blend it out. Pull it. Pull, 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 pull. Pull it, man. Get some more zinc. So this whole space of the canvas comes together with the, you know, with the dry brushing, the titanium and zinc over the top of these clouds, creating highlights. So you've just got to get this basis in for what you're, what you're talking about. I'm going to bring this here. Remember, think blanket. These are just little cloudy blankets. I'm going to just scumble it up like you do. I'm scumbling it. A little more zinc. A little more scumble because it should be pretty light up here, right? I'm just scumbling. And then I just, what I do is I kind of soften out any of the obvious marks that make patterns in my work. Come here and a little more pure pigment. Get a little more pure pigment. I'm going to move this up a little bit for myself because I've got this edge, but I don't want to flip it over. I just pull an obvious bank here. See how I'm doing that? I'm creating this very distinctive cloud, and I'm going to make this more distinctive behind it. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. A little more zinc. You're like, I'm almost out of zinc. <gasps> How much zinc? <sighs> so much. All right. So now we have the basis for our cloud floor. Yes. Once you have that, you are in like flan. Let me get my clean water that John so kindly brought me. Sip my coffee. Let this become a little bit drier. And then I'm going to go through and add the details that make this seem like a very highly detailed painting. And it's kind of loose and relaxed. I was like really challenging to rate. Hey, learn how to drink coffee. <laughs> how is everybody doing? Really good. You know, this is an exciting painting because I think lots of people wanted to see how to do these kinds of cloud banks and these kinds of fog, and this kind of valley. I mean, like I'm even excited about this painting. I see lots of variations that I would love to see done on this one. So, I mean, like... It's, you know, I'm not a painter, but I mean, like, there's been a couple paintings that I've always wanted. I, I'd really like to try. This is one that I thought it would be, you know, I'd like to try. I got distracted and looked away because I heard a weird sound like electricity was popping and boiling up. And I was just trying to make sure I wasn't going to get electrocuted. <laughs> 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 I was over. not ignoring him. I was just sort of afraid for my life for a second. So. Something made a weird noise. I'm going to ignore it. I'll come over and take a look. I don't know. It made a weird noise. I'm going to just... There was like this popping and crackling over here. Okay. Okay. <sighs> that was really scary. <sighs> really looking forward to the remodel. <laughs> I'm going to get my small cloud brush since I'm still here and load it up with my zinc at first, my zincs, and then my titanium white. But I'm going to come back here into this space. And I'm going to come along this cloud, and I'm going to just add initially with some zinc back here because it's such a, a 
an airy fairy little white that it you know it just it does it just reminds me of like what fairy wings would be painted out of I'm just creating some dimension into that a little bit with my zinc and some sort of a cloud that's happening here that comes up and you know there's a little bit of fog there we go now these little zinc marks are pretty level and flat and I again for this type of bank think of water and or dry ice observe dry ice as it levels it does a very similar thing and that's what you're kind of talking about artistically you're talking about that that blanket of clouds. You hear poets talking about it all the time. And you can see how the zinc just creates that little texture for us without being too harsh or detailed. And that's creating some nice value. I'm going to load back up again. Even though I think a lot of this is going to be behind the wolves, I can't tell until I put them in exactly what's behind them. So, because sometimes I change my placement, like as I'm ex like, I design a piece and then I'm like, oh no, it could be even better. That's the thing that happens, I do. <laughs> I'm just making sure that this has some texture and some feeling to it. So when I have that kind of happening, I'm going to get into my titanium and do the same load. I pull into my paint. I come from the outside edge and I grab some. See how I'm grabbing it? I'm grabbing it and then I'm offloading and that works it through the bristles. Now I'm going to come and give my banks. Nice pop of white highlight. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Again, a little bit like a shore, isn't it? So this brush is all about making sure you have a nice angle to, to the canvas. You want to be on an angle. If you were in vertically, you would not be getting a nice result. You'd just be getting this weird twirl, which would be super confusing. Like, how's she getting those clouds? And I'm getting this weird twirl. Vertical brush stroke. If you're using even a bright, this is true, you would be on the corner of this bright to do this effect. So sometimes the angle of your brush greatly impacts the kind of stroke that you can make with it. I am finding all the little tops. You know what I'm doing? I locate all the little tops. And then I just follow them, like you do. Follow all the little tops of all the little clouds. I like to just be wiggly and I'm pushing pretty hard in now to get that little effect. Yeah. And you can. You can push really hard. And be okay. Now, if your painting is at all uh, wet, you may get some underbinding, yeah? If your painting is still wet and it's not dry, it's not a great... Uh, dry brushing doesn't really work wet into wet at all. So some techniques, um, sometimes, okay, everything in acrylic painting is knowing when to paint wet into wet and dry. Like, like at the end of the day, that's what it is. So if you're trying to do a dry brush technique and use that effect to create an airy effect, you really need the undersurface to be completely cured and dry. It doesn't take that long with acrylic paint, though. That's like its whole attractive value. Everybody just loves about it. Sam just... Finding my different little clouds. I'm going to move this up a bit, John, just because okay, sure, sure. it's more comfortable for me and I don't want to flip it. Come back over here. And just let that cloud fall down. Let that cloud fall down and I'm just going to Do, 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 do. Just the tops of the 
All right, how are we doing? We should be feeling kind of okay about now. This is really exciting. It's almost done. Yeah, it is. We're just about down to the wolves. I'm just making sure that we have demoed our cloud banks enough to have everyone feeling pretty good about any cloud that they have. This is another thing you can do you might not know. You can really soften even titanium white with this. So don't feel like you can't. Yes, you can. Look at that. <laughs> it's the thing you don't know you can do. Still fine. <laughs> Be as brutal as you like. So now we have this low bank of clouds and we have this far bank. We've got this mountain. And now we need to get our wolves on there. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to transfer these on the canvas. Um, I'm going to make sure this is completely dry so that will work for me. All the materials for this are in the description below. Let me show you. So, yeah, as she was saying, in the description below, you'll find a link to what we call a traceable, which is a, a it's a printout. You can you can print it on your computer and use that to trace on the image onto your uh, onto your canvas. And we've got some uh, videos that you can find either in the playlist link on YouTube or on our website. We've got some uh, some links up there that say how to use our traceable, and that and she'll show you here in just a minute. But they're just a quick tool to help you so that drawing isn't a barrier for you to be able to paint. And, uh, you know, that way you can, you can learn the drawing skills independently at your own pace from uh, the painting skills. So hopefully those will be really useful for you guys. Oh, I love it when it's dry. <sighs> We're almost there. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you my secret weapon for fur. Fur? Um, yeah. I talk about these tools a lot. I really like them. Of course, there's other ways to do it. So while I get enthusiastic about my secret weapon for fur during this next section, don't feel like you have to have it to fur. It's just what I love. Okay, so you might have a whole other way of doing that, and that's completely okay. I certainly have demoed fur with, like, every kind of black brush. Mm -hmm. I think I do fur with a cloud brush. I should do that sometimes as a challenge. You know, you don't want to ever get too caught up in what you have. So when I put these in initially, I actually just freehanded them with paint, which was okay, but I didn't completely 100% love their placement. So I did a little tweaking for a traceable. So I'd say this is even better than the painting. So your, your first one that you did there... Uh... It's close, but they're just a smidge different. I just felt like there needed to be some placement changes and some stuff like that. And so I fixed a couple things that were in there. And sometimes it's subtle like that, but it makes a big difference in your end result. Because I need to have some of this. We're not going to paint a, paint this in a little bit of detail, but a lot of this stuff here won't be. It just needs to be dark value because there's a cloud bank coming over it. What's nice about putting it in, though, is depending on how you put your cloud bank in, I am taping my traceable down. And I'm going to tell you the wolf measurements really quick. So when you're printing this out at home, I don't have any control over your printer. Right. Right. So the wolves are from chest to the tail should be 12 centimeters or just under five inches. And from paw to the nose is dead on four and just a little over. It's like 10 and a half centimeters. So on your printer, that's the, the ratio that you're trying to get. Let's do that again. We're talking just under five from the chest to the tail or just a little over it just just under five just for that last little hair but you can see a lot of this is off that doesn't matter this is the aspect ratio that you're looking for and from the paw to the nose four so at as you're printing just give that a quick measurement that way they you know just in case there's something crazy with your printer at home you're getting the same basic wolves not like giant dire wolves <laughs> and wolves not one... from game of thrones where you're like and, these and wolves not... be like super john snow wolves <laughs> so this not... would probably go with the john snow painting that would be awesome <laughs> it would. so if you want it to be a game of thrones painting increase the size of the wolves so they're really big mm -hmm. make them whiter there you oh, go. i, I totally thinking... solved it for you you didn't even know i was this is serral paper it's a transfer paper yeah I like it quite a lot. Um, I'm not enjoying the red because the red will bleed through white. 
but I am enjoying all the rest of it. I took all my pencils away that I used to transfer. You did? I did not put them on my desk. And oh. that was after you had me get everything to be sure, sure, sure this time I, I did. <gasps> Here's one. Oh, you got it. <laughs> Thank you, babe. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, it's fine. I'm going to sharpen up my tip a little bit because I like a sharp uh, pencil. Mm-hmm. Not this one. Uh, this is my chalk sharpener. I just want a nice sharp tip. You could use a burnishing tool, too. You want to make sure that this is going to be still and that you can see everything. And you're just trying to get... I'm not even going to worry that much about my first stroke because that's going to happen as I um, paint these guys. So I'm just making sure that I have the lines, hopefully clearly, to my wolves here. Hi there. Take the nice little haunches down. I love the tail. Just telling myself where the tail is. And again, these legs, don't get too stressed about these back legs because these have to be in a fog bank. They are in shadow. We are only even doing them just depending on how your fog bank comes out. That way, no matter what, your wolves look good because I know for many of you, they are super important to this painting. People have very strong feelings about wolves. All right. So once I have their base shape in, I can pull my main image and my printer. And hopefully I got enough. I did of the blue stuff on my canvas. I just ordered a bunch of new of this. Um, so I have this in, and the first thing that I will do is I'm going to just paint in their values with a small brush. Okay. So I'm going to just be painting in where it's light, where it's dark. Um, this is real similar to how you do grass, interestingly enough. So I'm going to start with a number two Ruby Satin Bright, and that's because it's a very smooth brush. It's going to give me a nice edge. You could do one of my number twos and red handles. You're just going to want to start with that. I'm going to dip my brush in water and start talking about them. So pull out some of the some of the dark. All right. And we'll start with our dark, dark, dark values, which is gonna seem crazy at first. Crazy, crazy at first, but as we do it, you'll be happier with it. So these back legs do in this just pure dark value. And again. Super important not to, like, if you're like, oh, I messed it up, it's too thick. It doesn't really matter. There's a big cloud bank going over it. You just need to have a dark shape kind of happening, like, right there. So just pure dark, 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 dark. Dip. Reload. I like to make the paw using my brush. But again... It's fine back here. I'm going to put another little leg sort of thought about there. Little paw, little paw, back paw. Just need the implication that there's two legs. Really, really don't get stressed. I'm going to add a little white to this next one, but not much. It's just going to be slightly lighter color. And I'm going to add what is the sort of Wolf in the background, sitting down with the tail is actually coming this way. We won't really see that once the bank is in. But there's this subtle thing that happens when, where the transparent paint shows some things. So in my experience, it's good to just make sure that you've got, there's his little tail peeking out, right? His little bushy tail. So it's tapered there. So we've got a little tail happening there in the dark back legs. Now I'm going to go back into my pure paint. And I'm going to make sure that I've carried this tail off. And I'm going to just do this little brush stroke out here. I'm coming back with my little fur weapon. But having this as a nice base will help me when I get that done. So that's looking pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. No, looking good. All right. So... For these guys, the top of them 
is darker than the bottom. So I'm going to just come here and make sure that I've got a nice dark value at the top of my wool. And you can see how whenever I'm doing fur, I'm just pulling out the brush and letting all the little hairs start to talk about that. I haven't even gotten into my cool brush whipping. <laughs> haven't even gotten there yet. And you have a little white in this, but this is pretty dark underneath. Mm-hmm. Right? Come here. Now that the ear is also, we're going to start out pretty dark on the ear and do it smaller because when you put the fur in, it's easy for your ears to get too big. I'm going to pull this down the body to about uh, just above the midway on the wolf. Okay. So again, just about the midway on the wolf. So this is like a gray wolf that we're doing, and this is a pair of them. Um, Originally, they were just sort of standing there, but I just thought the idea of them howling and talking to their pack was kind of compelling. I'm going to put my glasses on for the little tiny bits. Otherwise, I won't do a good job. Mm -hmm. Now, the back of this leg, it's probably a good idea that this be pretty dark. I'm going to just make sure I paint this, and then maybe this toe. So I'm going to take this toe. I'm going to a little toe here. Start talking about the toes. That's how I get the toes. I just tap the <laughs> brush in. Sometimes we get so caught up in the anatomy of stuff that we're like, I don't know how that's done. And you're like, wait, I kind of do actually know how that's done. All right, I'm going to put a little white on this so it's just slightly lighter. But make sure that it's still pretty dark for this front leg, just initially at first. Also kind of talking a little bit about paws here because those we're going to see more right that can come up a little bit because there's some chest here right pretty good pretty good pretty good now i'm going to take my brush and i'm going to get into my lighter paint but it still needs to be pretty pigmented so at least about here and i'm going to come and paint the next value in I'll make sure that when I'm coming along the belly, I'm a little bit furry here. And it can, you can take a little bit back here, but you don't want to take out too much of this dark value because that's what's going to make it seem like there's a leg in the fog. Nothing as stressful as having your wolf not have enough legs. <laughs> My wolf does not have enough legs! Yo. So when I come to the neck, I'm going to make sure I leave this little first stroke out a little bit. But this is all my lighter value. As I come around the head, I might darken it up a little bit for just the top of the head and where the eye is going to be. And I'm just sort of darkening that up a, lit, a little bit. Wipe off. I'm going to get my white. And I'm going to make sure that this area of the howl is definitely lighter. Look at that. Already is kind of wolfy shaped. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a shadow in the mouth. It's best to just come. I'm just going to load my brush with some black. I'm going to come in here and very carefully paint in that shadow. And then while I'm here, I'm going to very carefully paint my nose. I'm going to actually use my base color for the eye. It's sort of interesting. And that's right here at the forehead. I'm going to come down and make this little greater than, less than symbol. Just tapping it in. Less is more. And while you're here with this dark color, go ahead in the center of your ear and put that shadow. Just might as well. Just get it in there. Yeah. Just fluff the tail a little bit. Even though it's going to be all in fog. <laughs> Just being silly. All right. Got to block in my other little guy. And then once that's done, I can very quickly paint them in. I'm going to oh, look. Okay. Good values. So, I mean, he's got a weird little look going on right now, but in a minute, he's going to be so handsome. Mm -hmm. Or it could be her. It could be a him and a her. Mm -hmm. Or it could be wolf buddies. I don't know. I'm not involved in their personal life. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I just paint them. 
I'm wondering, I think I have a number two of these, but I'm only seeing my number fours. Oh, there's my number two. This is my secret for a weapon. Just two self-identified wolves hanging out yeah. in the woods. Yep. I like it. Self-identified wolves. <laughs> One of them could be a self-identified jellyfish. We don't know. but We don't know. We don't know them like that. We, we just can't don't. make assumptions. We don't know them like that. We don't. All right. I'm going to be silly over here. I'm going to take my black, and I'm going to just take a minute to come in the center of the ear and make sure that's black. I'm going to also make sure that the inside of this howl is black, and then the tip of this nose is black. Then while I have that, I'm going to go ahead and get my... Main my blue and black color add just a smidge of white to it just so that I'm getting the um it's dark but it's not as dark as it can be. And I'm gonna come behind him and make sure that I'm painting in the same thing I painted on the first one, right? Mm hmm Which is those values. So, you know, around his head and eye, it's a little bit darker. I loved how easy he was to paint it. It was like, or she, or jellyfish. All right, I'm going to wipe off. I'm going to get some of my white. And again, it makes that darker color, but it's not as dark. Maybe lighter than that, though. Goodness. This is not or Orthrus, the two-headed wolf. This no. is two two wolves. Two wolves having a howl. Ice wolves. Ice wolves. Ice wolves. Well, you I know, know they, if that's a real thing, but I named them ice wolves because I they, felt like they. Well, I mean, they felt like they were that's, very icy. That's true. They could be Texas wolves on vacation to the north. They could be. But they're All right, not. That's these are ice wolves. I'm you you made them ice wolves. You know. <laughs> I'm gonna put in my little eye, my little greater than, less than eye. Not much of it. See, sometimes less is more. If you do less, you get more. Now, where it's dry, I can take clean water and with my brush, erase any of the blue that um, is still showing. Only where it's dry. See how the blue just erases? And that's the other reason that I chose blue was because it if it blended into stuff it wouldn't impact my if I did red it would be like all oh, making everything kind of a weird not happy purple. Alright, so see how I just erased all that? Now I'm gonna switch to my weapon. This is a Cambridge bristle brush number two. Um, a lot of bristle brushes can be problematic for acrylic painters because if they get wet they get soft. This has a synthetic filament in it. Um, and so it doesn't, it's why I had included it in my explore set because I think they're so, so, so cool. But this is a number two, you can get these where art materials are sold. And I really do love them. But wherever you're at, wherever you live, what you're looking for, what you want to ask the art stores, do they have bristle brushes that are blended with synthetics? Is what you're really going for. All right, so let's do our light colored fur first. So I'm gonna pull out my base color. And I'm going to get some white into it. And I'm going to have it be very loosely mixed. See how very loosely mixed it is? And I'm going to start coming down the neck, under the chin, making very soft little brush strokes. Right here. Just a little bit. And that's the other reason, because this is a bristle brush and it's not like super sharp, it's why it's a nice idea to have it be small enough. And look, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna flick this fur. See the fur, fur flicking? Flick the fur. Just very lightly over this underpainting. It's okay when it shows through, it just actually gives dimension to the fur on him. Add a little more blue into the mix if you want. Make him even icier. Now front uh, front leg a little bit. I'm going to make sure that I've got some fur coming down the front. And also right here. See a little fur flip, flipping out? A little bit. Come right here. 
And again, back here it can get darker. That is okay. While I've got this, I'm going to little blue, lots of white, do my wolf behind now. Give him a little fur flick out. Flick, 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 flick. Not too much work to do there. It's loosely mixed, so there's a couple different values. Now, something I can do is I can wipe off, and I'm going to get some white just on my brush. Medium white. I'm going to make sure that right here, with the nose, I'm going to just tip a little bit of a lighter value right here around the muzzle. Rinse, rinse, rinse. I'm going to get a little of my white, just white, on my brush. And I'm going to make sure that there's a little bit of fur. See I'm flicking that? Yeah. That's lit from behind, as if in halo. Add some right here. Just a little bit. And then... Give your neck a couple places where that's happened as well. See how I'm doing just a little bit? It's like I'm not even painting and fur just shows up everywhere. It's so cool. He has a little bit of this halo and effect around him. I'm going to just, or her, or jellyfish. I'm going to make sure I come here and uh, it was lighten it. the muzzle or lighten this muzzle a little bit. I think it was Tammy was saying it's a it's a mother and daughter howling. I love it. Mother and daughter howling. As mothers and daughters should. All right. Now that I have this, I'm going to come into my darker color. I'm going to add some white. But I still want it to be pretty dark, and I do want it to be loosely mixed. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to start... Blending that in a little bit around the ear. Loosely mixed, making fur. Now I can blend this darker fur right over my lighter fur. Loosely mixed is a powerful thing. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to come down my down my tail. Right here, so we've got some powerful stuff happening right there, don't we? I'm going to take this color, maybe blue it up a bit. But again, back into the loosely mixed. Come behind the neck here. There we go. Put that on the ear. If you lose your eye when you're painting the fur on the face, don't stress. You can always put it back in. Now I'd like to, I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to tap it off on my towel, I'm going to lighten the bit around in front of the eye just a titch. Right here. Maybe a little bit around that ear. There we go. Okay. So that's all there. Rinse out a little bit. Right? You're going to want to definitely, I think it's probably a good idea to make sure your shadow is pretty furry right here. Maybe a little bit between these two legs. And it can be a little bit at the shoulder and under the belly. I'm going to get my very dark color on this brush. It's dry and I'm loading my dark color on it. And I'm going to tip, not all the fur, some of it. See how we're tipping some? Definitely down this tail back here a little bit 
Yeah, we're just tipping some. And once you have everybody tipped where they've got a little fur, they've got a little something happening, you can always come back with your white. Just make sure you've got some halo here too. Have a little fun, paint your little wolf. Wolf, 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 wolf. Wolf, wolf, wolf. All right. If you lose any of your detail, one thing that you can do is you can come through with a detail brush or small brush, whatever you have, and tighten up just a couple places. So, like, it can be nice to come around the muzzle. See how I'm doing? And kind of. Pull that in a little bit. And if you want to put the eye back in darker, you can. Or if you don't, you don't have to. Underneath him, though, needs to be a little bit of a shadow. And I kind of liked taking this in a bit of the blue. And just coming underneath here. Under the paws of it. See this light shadow? It's kind of not really a bright day, but you can tell from some of the lighting on them that there is some brightness to it. So it's like, well, you know. I'm also going to do this weird thing. I'm going to take a little of my paint color in a slightly higher highlight. It's a weird bit of fussiness, but I'm going to add some highlight to the paws to help them show up more. Sometimes if they're highlighted, they show better. Now, we have to let that dry to put in the cloud bank. And something that we can do while it's drying and to put in the cloud bank is to give the howl breath uh, a visual representation. My advice is to take a small detail brush like this number two, any teeny tiny brush you have a lot of control over. I'm going to use just my titanium white. You could also use your zinc if you have trouble with this uh, um, technique. And I'm going to get my glasses back on so I can see what I'm doing. Come inside the mouth. And I'm going to wiggle out just a little. Like almost like steam that comes out of the howl. Yep. You all see the little steamy how? You don't have to have a steamy how. It's just something that I like to have. Right here. What I did there was just sort of refine that muzzle. I'm just making these little lyrical marks that go up the canvas that say this this little wolf is howling. That's what's happening. If you lose the black on your mouth, just take your detail brush and come back in and very carefully let all that back in. See how you can do? Not really a problem. All right. Ice wolves are almost done now. So we've got to put in a little cloud that's kind of rolling off of this down into here. And that's going to obscure about most of this here. Which is why I was like, you don't have to be that in, like intense about painting it. So I'm going to take my number eight brush. And I'm going to come get my little zincs. You can get a little pigment on it so it's not pure white. But you want it to be pretty light. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to start making my little wiggles. Coming off here. And when we're doing this, you'll see how kind of that being dark there, just showing through. Really, if I had no legs there, it would just feel really weird because the, the cloud would be too transparent for that effect. 
you'd be like, I don't really want that. That's not really worth thing. You may still do that, but I'm just saying it's going to help. I'm just doing my little wiggle that I like to do. A little wiggle. Take some cloud off the pigment. Little wiggle. Just making sure that there's just a little, like a little fog in front of the leg, and it's coming down here. Now I'm going to get a little more zinc. And just come and tip this a little bit. Not too much, because I, I want just the the hint of some of these elements there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight some of it, but I, I want some of those elements like there. That's all done. I'm going to get my little number cloud. You could use any brush that you do this with, any brush that you do your little detail with. You see me? You saw me doing a lot of it with just my eight. I'm going to just make sure that this part of the cloud, just this front, this little fog bank is Kind of coming down here and be a little thicker right here. I'm still leaving it transparent back here because I really want to show. I'll just do that. One little touch here so that it feels. I don't want to take away all that shadowing, but that's what I've got. And now, guess what I get to do? You sign it? I get to sign it. We painted it, man. Wow. That's a, this was an incredible painting. Thank you. Really you incredible. Had a lot of fun. This is this turned out so nice. Thank you. I mean, like everybody is really loving this. The cloud layers. I mean, like, if you needed to do some clouds, this is your practice painting, man. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> By the end of it, you should have some more thoughts on clouds. I'm gonna get some of my just titanium white. On my little detail here. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna sign this in white because I, I as I, I say and say and say, just think about how you're signing your painting. You wouldn't want to sign it where the signature becomes more important than the artwork. Unless you yourself are more important than the artwork and then it's okay. Because you're the artist, you get to decide if that's true or not. Yeah. All right. Wow. This is amazing. I mean, this is a big painting. We had so This many is a big painting. You guys asked for a big painting. I was like, I'm only going to do it. And I'm like, well, they've been doing some really intense stuff lately. We just did that whole still life. And I get Texas snowflakes. And you get Whoa. some some bubbles yes. for, hell, we for, for, for celebration. We are the champions. Yep. There's stuff up above my arms. <laughs> we are the champions of painting wolves in icy snow. Well, thank you guys for coming and doing this with us. And if you have a chance, come join us in the live because this has been a lot of fun. We have, we've had so many people here hanging out with us. It's just so much fun. I love, love, love talking to you guys. Can't thank you for hanging out with me. Tomorrow, last day of our 12 days live. I thought we won't keep going live. We will, but I mean, yeah. in a row. Big day. I hope to see you there. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Stay safe. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.